Okay. But anyway, on the Second Amendment, uh, I'm I'm a gun owner. I don't. I'm like you. I target shoot. Uh, I hunted years ago. I never really liked it, so I don't. I haven't hunted for years. Uh, and actually, I don't use. I've only got a handful of guns left, and I don't use them very much. But I do have some acquaintances that are are, you know, uh, very much gun nuts. You know, I'd, and I've never heard this talked about too much. But with regard to the Second Amendment. I'm wondering if a lot of these folks look at it not necessarily as a right to bear arms, but a duty to bear arms. You know, going back to the old idea of the militias, and and you were the idea was you were uh, it was a duty to to have a uh, a musket so that if you were called upon to uh, defend the the colonies and you uh, you you had your uh, your musket ready to go. That was very definitely the idea that Jefferson and maybe a third of the founders had was that uh, every state should have a state militia, the and the National Guard is is the remnant of that, and or the modern version of that, and that each state's militia should be the beginning and end of the United States military. That uh, unless we were in time of war, uh, Jefferson opposed there being any standing army other than just, you know, an infrastructure, you know, basically a, maybe an officer corps and a few people here and there, but, but basically having any standing army when we were not at war. And, and in fact, when he became president in 1800, there were, uh, as I recall, over 300,000 men in the Continental Army, uh, a remnant of the Revolutionary War and, and sort of a a welfare program that uh, uh, John Adams had, had maintained, essentially, an employment program. And uh, Jefferson took that down to like 3,000 people. I mean, he, he radically cut the number of people in the, in the military, um, which uh, history didn't treat him well for because, you know, he left office in, in um, 1809, in March of 1809. And uh, a year or two later, it, it, the War of 1812, you had England and Canada attacking us in large part because our army had been had been stripped apart. But the militias, particularly in the northern states, where where uh, you know where the, where we were attacked by Canada and England, uh, never really got put together and never never were done the way that uh, Jefferson envisioned it because he wasn't able to get it into the Constitution. It wasn't federal law, and uh, so the closest that they, they got was the Second Amendment, which. For the southern states, they, they had pretty good militias because they were also the slave patrols. And so everybody was required, every every white male between, you know, 17 and 47 was required at least once a week to go out on slave patrol and uh, in Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, uh, Georgia, and and perhaps some of the other southern states. And uh, But I know those states for sure. And, and uh, in fact, uh, Sally, I'm forgetting her last name, Parker, I think maybe, uh, anyhow, she wrote a brilliant book called Slave Patrols that outlines all this stuff. So, uh, yeah, they may be thinking that they have an obligation to use arms to, you know, defend the country or whatever. But uh, that that was, you know, it, the idea was not that there would be like this, just like these random groups popping up and calling themselves militias and running around with guns. It would be a very well-organized thing under the under the power of the governor unless there was a declaration of war by Congress in which case those uh, those patrols, those uh, militias became federalized. So, I mean, that's the history of it. And you go back and read um, uh, read uh, Patrick Henry's speech at the Virginia Ratifying Convention, and it's pretty shocking. He goes into exactly how many black people there were in Virginia and how afraid he was of a slave uprising and how important it was to maintain the state militias and uh, because they were the slave patrols and said that uh, he was going to prevent Virginia from ratifying the Constitution if they didn't promise to put the Second Amendment, to attach the Second Amendment to it, and change the language from uh, for the security of a, a, of a nation to for the security of a state, because he, wa because he was concerned that, that uh, if uh, Northern Yankees ever got the White House, that they might get us into a small war just to have the excuse to call up the militia and free the slaves in the South as part of the process. And he lays that out in his speech, Patrick Henry, who, by the way, was the largest slaveholder in the, in the state of Virginia, in the Commonwealth of Virginia, and ironically was the guy who, who said, give me liberty or give me death. I mean, that's the thing everybody remembers about Patrick Henry, the largest slaveholder, ran the biggest concentration camp in the state of Virginia. So anyhow, Kirk, uh, that's, that's what I know about it. Thanks a lot for the call.